بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين بالقاسم المصطفى محمد Dear viewers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh By the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Ahl Bayt alayhi wa salam we have started this series of the commentaries of the Holy Quran where we have reached a point of discussing about the importance of learning the Holy Quran and acting upon the teachings of the Holy Quran continuing our discussion uh, from the previous episode where Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi says this hadith has been mentioned in uh, the book of, uh, book of Amali the Shaykh Al-Tusi rahmatullah alayhi where Rasulullah states khiyarukum man ta'allama al-Quran wa'allama the best amongst you is that person who learns Quran and who teaches other. Unfortunately, within this era that we are living, being who is the best, for some group of people, it's financial. The one who has more wealth, that his bank statement is it's heavier, that person is better amongst us. Or the per person who has better career, or the person who has so and so and different car and different materialistic belongings, they become the best amongst us that we respect them and we appreciate their uh, being. But Rasulullah says he is giving us a tool. He's giving us something that we can judge people based on this, that if you want to see who's best amongst you, well, am I the best amongst this group of people? Am I or not? If I, do I think that with my wealth or my personal belonging, I can become the best amongst the people. That's not what this hadith is mentioning. It doesn't uh, come together with the teachings of Rasulullah. Rasulullah says, Khiyarukum man ta'allam al-Qur'an. The best amongst you is the one who learns Qur'an. Ta'allam. Learning Qur'an. Understanding Qur'an. Trying to see what is Qur'an trying to teach us where is Quran trying to take us how Quran wants to shape our lives this is very very important for Quran to shape our lives not we try to see okay how can we find Quranic verses that will prove our point no we have to let we give ourselves to the Holy Quran like a clay we give ourselves to the Qur'an like a clay. We say, oh Qur'an, shape it for us. The way that I should live my life. The way that I should treat my wife. The way that I should treat my husband. The way that I should treat my kids. The way that I should treat my parents. And so on and so forth. So action plan will be inshallah. We learn Qur'an. We read and understand the Holy Qur'an and teach it to other people. That start within our own family. We don't have to go somewhere else. We have to start within our own family. Inshallah, every action plan that we will bring, every good thing that we will discuss from the teachings of Quran and Ahlul Bayt alayhi wasalam, we have to first and foremost apply it within our own household. Unfortunately, for some people, when they learn something good, good morality, good akhlaq, good characteristics, they apply this outside the home. But inside the home, it's missing it. So the action plan will be, us as a parents, we read the Quran, understand the Quran, pay attention to the lectures and the commentaries of the Holy Quran, and teach it our kids. I, as the older brother, I will learn the Quran, I will understand the Quran, and I will tell to my younger sisters, my younger brothers, how about on a nightly basis, I will come to you and I will teach you what I have learned from the Holy Quran. I, as the older sister, I will do the same thing for my younger brothers and younger sisters. I, as a cousin, I, as a brother, I, as a friend, when we get together, let us become as a community learning Quran and teaching Quran to one another. What kind of community this will become if they are all discussing, not politics. A lot of the youth that I discuss, they are sick and tired of, they sit within a group of people sitting together, 10, 15, 20 of adults, they all talk about politics, this politics, that politics, Quran. Khiyarukum man ta'allam al-Quran. The best amongst you is the one who learns Quran and teaches Quran. This is very important. 
Any time that we are lost within seditions and confused in disputes and disagreement, we should refer back and we should take guidance from this holy book, from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This has to become part of our belief, dear brothers and sisters, that Quran can solve our problems. If I don't believe in it, I will not take it seriously. I will just come, maybe one or two or three of these episodes I will read, watch, and other, other ep episodes from different scholars, may Allah bless them that they have given some commentaries of the Holy Quran. I hear there, I listen to it. If I don't believe in it, if I don't take it seriously, I won't be able to apply it, I won't apply it, and I won't see the benefit. For example, I'll give you a very, very tangible example for myself. When I get sick, typically I don't go to the doctor. I let the immune system to do the job. For my immune system to get stronger and stronger and stronger. I'm not saying not to go to the doctor, not at all. When you get sick and you are in need of doctor, please do visit a doctor. Don't go and say, Sheikh says, don't visit a doctor, this is good. No, I let the immune system to kick in. But sometimes when I, after I go through a lot of pain, I say, okay, I'm gonna go to the doctor. I take the medicine, I'm not sure. Should I take the medicine? I shouldn't take the medicine. I'm not that much a believer of it. I'm not saying this is right, but this is my personality. But when it becomes really severe and I see it's, I'm no longer, I'm not able to move forward anymore with my life and I'm basically with the ground, I say, okay, let me take the pills. It's the belief. If I believed this from the beginning, I would have taken it and it wouldn't end up to this point that I won't be able to walk anymore. Believing in Quran that it can help us resolve our issues, any issues that we are facing, that Quran can benefit us, that belief will become into our action. We will take it seriously. We will appreciate the Holy Quran. That we see, we can find an abundant amount of lessons in every story of the Holy Quran. One of the interpreters and commentators of the Holy Quran, while I was reading his book, uh, he argued that Quran has almost 286 stories to his understanding from the Holy Quran, 286 stories. And every one of them has an abundant amount of lessons that we can learn and apply to our life and revolutionize our life with the stories of the Holy Quran and the lessons that, are ex that exist within the Holy Quran. The stories of the Holy Quran doesn't have an expiration date that this story benefited the people 1400 years ago, 1300 years ago, 1000 years ago, 500 years ago. Well, Sheikh, this day and age, in the 21st century, in America, in London, in Australia, in Europe, everywhere, Sheikh, I did not find the stories of the Quran to be relevant. I didn't find any benefit from the stories of the Quran. We cannot argue. The stories of the Quran doesn't have an expiration that it will end here and it will not continue. No. It will continue until the day of judgment. The stories of the Holy Quran benefit us. Action plan will be, Shaykh, what do you mean that I need to learn Quran and teach it to other people for me to become the best amongst my community, amongst my people? Stories of the Holy Quran. We can search stories of the Holy Quran, story of the, stories of the prophets that exist within the Holy Quran. Which, if we look into it, and we look at it that we want to learn something from it. Stories is the best way that we can teach someone. It's the best way that we can teach someone. It's a story. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought it. You see, the book of law, if we can call it, the book of teachings, it has more than 286 stories according to this uh, commentator of the Holy Quran. I read stories. We have to tell bedtime stories to our kids. Well, we tell them stories from the Holy Quran and we'll try to see. I remember I had uh, uh, a lecture, series of lectures in the month of Ramadan, one month of Ramadan, I believe, 30 episodes explaining the story of the Prophet Yusuf ala Nabina wa alayhi wa sallam. 30 episodes, each one half an hour. I don't think it was recorded in that center that I went to. But inshallah, if we get a chance, we will get into the uh, uh, life of Prophet Yusuf ala Nabina wa alayhi salam and the chapter which is called Yusuf and we will see that 30 episodes each one half an hour we can learn from the life of Prophet Yusuf. Another series that I prepared and I lectured in another Ramadan in another center it was 30 days what we learn practical guidance from the story of the life of Prophet Musa ala Nabina wa alayhi salam that is relevant to our life and that can be practiced starting now. 
these two stories take 60 episodes, 60 lectures, each one 30 minutes. How much we can learn from the Holy Quran? Endless. It is very, very important that we believe that Quran can resolve our issues and we look at the Quran with this mindset that Quran guide me. Quran, take me with you. Let me be engaged with the Holy Quran. Let me try for Quran to inspire me and to come into my life. You will definitely see the benefit. I cannot, I will try as much as possible to bring it to your, I mean, bring it closer to your mind, but until you don't see it, you don't practice it, you don't see the benefit, you will not appreciate it. And it's very important that we gain the knowledge and the most important knowledge, knowledge of Qur'an and Ahl Bayt So we come to word knowledge. Knowledge has very, very, very important status within our religion and faith. Madhab Ahl Bayt We see numerous amount of hadith and narrations from Ahl Bayt discussing the importance of knowledge and the person who gains knowledge. If you read the book, for example, Usul Al-Kafi, the first couple of chapters, it talks about knowledge. Bihar al-Anwar, all of our hadith books, it has narrations about the importance of knowledge and the person who is knowledgeable, who gains knowledge. Where Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi states, Al-alimu bayna al-juhar kal-hayya bayna al-amwat. What an example. This segment of the hadith, it's enough for us from that from this moment we make a decision we determined that I will dedicate a good amount of my day gaining the knowledge of Quran and Ahlul Bayt calling different people, trying to see how can I gain more from Quran and Ahlul Bayt Al-alimu bayna al-juhal, a knowledgeable person amongst a group of ignorant people who are jahil, who don't have knowledge. kal bayna al-amwat, it's like a, a person who's alive amongst a group of dead people. What is the benefit of these dead people? Nothing. They're dead. And how much benefit we can get from a person who is alive compared to a person who is dead? Rasulullah says the person who has knowledge, it's like a person who is alive amongst a group of people who are dead. For example, you go to a cemetery and you see hundreds of people are dead. There's no benefit from them. We cannot gain anything from them. But if we see a person who is alive, we can ask him a question. If we are in need of something, we can get from him. How much it is for, important for us to gain the knowledge. And the most important knowledge is the knowledge of Quran and Ahl Bayt Nothing else. Am I saying we should not study in universities? Am I saying we should not gain, learn physics and chemistry and algebra and get to our majors? No. I'm saying that we should dedicate a time in our daily routines in our daily schedule, half an hour, an hour, I take a book of hadith, I listen to lectures, I try to gain from the knowledge of Quran, Ahl Bayt Alim. The person who gains knowledge, and we say the most important knowledge is the knowledge of Quran. Again, we emphasize, and Ahl Bayt Alim. Everything that exists will ask forgiveness for this person who is gaining the knowledge. And again, the most important knowledge to be the knowledge of Quran, Ahl Bayt Hatta Haytan al Bahr, even the fishes within the sea will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive the person who is gaining the knowledge. And again, the knowledge, the most important knowledge is to be the knowledge of Quran and Ahl Bayt And it continues, Muslim. And gaining knowledge, and according to another hadith, the talab al alm faridatun ala kulli muslim wa muslimah, mu'min wa mu'minah. That gaining knowledge, it is mandatory. It's an obligatory act that we should partake, gaining the knowledge of Quran and Ahl Bayt Very important action plan will be for us to dedicate, beginning, like majority of us, after morning prayer, we should have time, maybe half an hour, 45 minutes, from the time that Adhan has been said, from Fajr until sunrise, which is typically about hour and a half, hour 15 minutes, which is makruh, forbidden, not haram, not recommended. It's not haram for us to sleep after Salat al-Subh. No, it's not haram. 
we can sleep. But it's very, very recommended for us to stay awake from time that adhan has been set, to do our adhan, salat al-subh, on time, until sunrise. Let's dedicate this one hour in the morning. We will have time for everything else. We will have it. We have to bring this. Again, this comes after believing that the words of Quran and Ahlul Bayt can resolve our issues, can cure our illnesses, can cure our family relationships, can benefit us in this dunya and akhara. This needs to be part of our belief. That Quran and Ahlul Bayt every day we say, Allah, ihdina sirat al mustaqim, guide me to the right path. But I don't read the Quran. I don't gain the knowledge of Ahl al-Bayt I won't be able to be guided. There, there is means for it. Oh doctor, cure me. I'm sick, I'm ill. Well, you need to take some medicines. Ah, uh, no medicines. Well, you have to be careful what you eat. You shouldn't eat greasy and oily food. Oh doctor, when I go home and I see my wife has cooked that biryani, I won't be able to resist. Oh, you have to be careful with your amount of sugars that you intake. Shaykh, Shaykh, when I see that plate of baklava, I won't be able to resist. Well, it will destroy you. So getting away from the teachings of Quran, from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Ahlul Bayt will make our life difficult. We will see a lot of challenges. It will have a lot of ups and downs within our lives if we get away. The further we get away from the teachings of Quran and Ahl Bayt wasalam, the more difficult our life will get. So the action plan will be one hour. If it's too much, half an hour, but be consistent every day. Take a book of Hadith, interpretation of Quran, that if you can read Arabic or Farsi, there are, of, there are a good amount of interpretation in Arabic and Farsi. And that exists there. And inshallah, these lectures will continue. And I have seen a lot of other scholars, may Allah prolong their lives, they have given uh, talk about different chapter of the Holy Quran, uh, which is very good, dedicating our lives, listening to lectures, asking, contacting different scholars for us to gain this knowledge. The more we gain, the more we will see the fruit of it in our life, inshallah. I will conclude my lecture tonight, inshallah, in this episode by asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the reappearance of our beloved Imam Mahdi ajrullah ta'ala faraj al-sharif Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Allahumma kun li waliyika al-hujjat min al-hasan salawatuka alayhi wa ala abaih fi hadhi sa'ata wa fi kulli sa'a waliyan wa hafidha wa qa'idan wa nasara wa dalilan wa ayna hatta tuskinu wa ardaka taw'a wa tumatta'u fiha tawila barahmatika ya arhamar rahimin